Okay, so on the dating front, you're going to have multiple people. I, I feel that very strongly that you might have multiple options. And I feel like the options that you're kind of like grinding away at, that one is not really working out. So it's important for you to at least accept it if for those of you who are going through it and it sounds familiar and it sounds like it resonates with you you might want to reassess that situation and see see it for what it is like see if it's even worth it and I feel for a lot of you it's a relationship and um, it might also be like family members okay family uh, situations where you have like financial ties with the other person so you can't find ways to extract yourself completely but it's going to be in your best interest to do so because it seems to me like it's going down a downhill trajectory and that's pretty much the end of the line it's grinding to a slow halt and then you're going to pretty much um, you can't really backtrack by that time so you know try to get yourself out okay so let's talk about this um, the first thing here is the family situation this is a uh, significant relationships and family okay or at least people that we consider our family it can be roommates or it can be um, people you're living with no matter like in no matter what capacity they're in it's people that you are sharing a space with or you consider to be your family we have the four of wands which indicates once again the family unit this is traditionally the marriage card and then we have the death card so a lot of you are in a situation where you are reassessing where you're living you're possibly changing your place of um, your office your physical office where you work there might be some shuffling around you might move in and out of your office or you might move in and out of out of your house on the other end of the spectrum there might be a significant relationship and this is a marriage type of situation that have been very if they have been very very rocky this is pretty much when you're going to go through it's either going to transform for the better and things can be revived or it's just going to be left behind for good I definitely feel because the four of wands came in first and then the death card came in second this is a situation that requires a coordinated or a concerted effort from both parties and I feel for a while now you have been thinking about this and you have been trying to find ways to make it work if you're dealing with somebody who is not cooperating with you it's really important for you to reassess and to make sure um, to to make sure that it's it's worth investing any more time sweat and tears are the messages that I'm getting so there has to be some major transformation and it has to come through from both parties otherwise it's not going to work okay um, the death card is also traditionally the card of Scorpio this deals with major major transformations in the home unit so these are things that you need to um, re-examine if there are residual like resentment or things that are not balanced out within the home environment they need to be addressed and they need to be fixed this month otherwise it's going to be very problematic for you um, for everybody involved down the line okay for those of you who are merely changing homes, changing offices, things are looking very, very good for you. I feel like this transformation is going to be very positive for you. You might get into a bigger space. I feel you might get into like, um, for example, if you've been in the basement, you might move up, you know, uh, to an office, corner office with a nice view. There will be a lot of, I feel like if you're moving from, from a house, you're going to get like, you're going to uh, upgrade to a bigger place and also in a place where it might be more highly elevated so you know second floor to sixth floor for example I feel like there's a place with a better view there's a place with a better view there's a bigger apartment some bigger office um, just a, a it's, a, it's going to be an upgrade, is what I'm trying to say. So it's going to be very positive, uh, Scorpios. I'm trying to see if there's anything else here. Um, the other message that I'm getting here is, you know, don't beat a dead horse. So I feel like, I feel like if there are innate problems within a house situation, whatever it is you're trying to pick at whatever it is that you're trying to fix whatever nice gestures that you're trying to put in to uh, 
either inject romance in the relationship. I feel like those are like um, cosmetic changes that you're making to the relationship or to the house environment. And cosmetic changes are very superficial. They don't have any long-term lasting effects. So what I mean is if you've been, you know, constantly putting in a lot of time and energy to maintain a relationship and the other person either is, you know, A, very self-absorbed or B, just not the right person for you, all the amount of work in the world is not going to fix it. So I, I'm sensing, I, I feel like you picking at it, like poking at it, and um, it's best for you to direct your energy elsewhere, okay? Now, in terms of your financial situation, things are looking very, very good. You've got like a lot of pentacles card, all positive. First of all, you have the king of pentacles. And the king of pentacles denotes to me somebody who is very, very financially well off. Not only are they able to generate wealth for themselves, they are able to... Um, offer very solid advice to other people so that they can help other people achieve financial stability and abundance as well. On the negative side, this is somebody who is very concerned about status, who is very concerned about their public image, and who is very wrapped up in um, basically financial stability. Now, in terms of your financial situation, you're in a position where you can give out advice to other people, your word is as good as gold, okay? When it comes to like uh, helping others or even managing, you know, the practical um, aspects of life, you know, getting things done in a timely manner, having good work ethics and things like that, you're really on top of the game, okay? You're on top of the heaps and other people are starting to realize that you're a major, major asset. So if you've been working at a company, uh, your supervisors and employers are starting to realize that you're a major asset. You're the one that is bringing in the money for the, the firm. You're working very hard, very diligently, and you're a major, major asset. So they're starting to realize this. It would be a good month for you as well if you want to um, negotiate your salary, if you want to get a promotion, if you want to apply for a step up or you know apply for a new job as well. It's going to be very favorable for you. Now, in terms of the energy that you're dealing with, we have the King of Pentacles as well as the King of Cups. You're showing up as the King of Cups. It fell out reverse, but I don't read reversals, not with this deck. So what I'm sensing here is this is the person that you are, okay? This is somebody who is very, like, nurturing, very caring, very emotionally um, in tune with other people. They always know their, their motives. And they're, they're like a very helpful person. So I feel like it's almost a, um, a veneer that you're putting on. It's sort of like, you're like this, you're the king of cups, but you're trying to play the role of the king of uh, pentacles, which is not a bad thing. It basically means you're letting your feelings and you're, you're putting all the other things aside because your focus is more on this, how to build up your financial base, how to come across as someone who's very like uh, calculating, not in a bad way, who's very methodical, who's very calculating, and who is very deliberate in their actions so that they can achieve success. So I feel almost as if you're going to be holding your feelings very, very close to your chest this month. You're not going to show people your cards you're not going to put your feelings your thoughts your ideas out there until the other party shows their cards so that means that you're taking a more practical approach when it comes to business and there might be as well attraction flirtation on the business front on the work front and it's something to be mindful about now both of these are male energies and i'm going to do the love readings later but what i'm sensing um just intuitively is you might be dealing with an earth sign and the earth signs are um, Taurus, Capricorn and um, Taurus, Capricorn and Virgo. You might also be dealing with a water sign, another water sign. So another Scorpio, Pisces and Cancer. I feel I, I felt like there's somebody in your mist that you're either giving money to. So it could be, you know, like um, it could be like child, somebody that, it could be like custody, you know, um, 
alimony or it could be like child support, something like that. And I feel almost like there's a, a strings attached when it comes to that relationship. It's a weird dynamic. But what I'm feeling is um, even though there might have been like a separation with that situation, you're still tied in financially. And but you work really hard for your, you know, your your assets, for your financial windfall. And I feel like the other party is benefiting from it. So I feel like there might be that kind of imbalance in the power dynamics okay but on the work front things are looking very very good for you I feel almost as if the people that you're hanging around with as well there is also a lot of emphasis on material things so you might you know use material things to either prop up your status which I don't feel is a bad thing but just keep that in check Money is coming through um, in large quantities, but, you know, be um, rational about how you spend it and about the types of people you're attracting. Because if you're like constantly, you know, flashing money around, you could attract the wrong, um, get a wrong, the wrong attention from the wrong people. But either way, Scorpios, you know who your friends are and um, you have good intuition. So I'm not going to dwell on this, okay? In terms of love and romance, we do have the Two of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. So what tends to happen, and this happens a lot with clients, is when, whenever I um, do readings for people and, you know, they, they talk about the, the times that they've made a really, really bad decision, is usually because they weren't feeling secure financially or they weren't feeling secure like uh, with their self-confidence and their sense of self-love. When we are not financially secure, when we're not operating at our best in terms of our confidence level, that's when we make really um, bad decisions. And likewise, when we are very financially secure, when we're very, very happy with our lives, that's when love relationships will come in and that's when we're able to attract people who are very good for us, okay? And I went off on a tangent because uh, I'm, what I'm trying to say here is we do have here in terms of love and relationships, the two of cups and the two of cups is a very harmonious relationship partner that you are drawing into your environment. So this is a card about friendship. This is the card about like socially dating, uh, going out and unexpectedly finding somebody who is like a kindred spirit to you who can finish your sentence, who understands exactly what you mean. So there is a very strong emotional, possibly even intellectual affinity with you and another person. I almost feel like a sense of sameness, same um, family, cultural background, same life experiences between you and the other person. And I also feel a lot of love and support is coming through. So going back to what I mentioned earlier, I feel like for a lot of you, you might be in one relationship and there's somebody else in your midst that you're interested in. And because this person is coming into your life and they're so in tune with you and they, they understand you, it's making you reassess what you're getting out from the other relationship. If the other relationship is very imbalanced and you haven't been made aware of it, the presence of this new person coming through is going to make you realize that, whoa, the other relationship is very unhealthy. Why didn't I see that before? So I feel like the juxtaposition between this new, this relationship and the ones you were dealing with, it's very jarring. It's going to be one of those things where you can't deny it any longer. And the realization is coming through so that you can make some positive changes in your life and to, you know, close some doors. Okay. So overall, it is very positive. Don't fear it. What I'm also getting here is um, for those of you who are in um, marriage relationship, there's going to be harmony being restored in the home environment. Okay. So it can be in the physical dwelling or it can be reconciliation with family members. A lot of you might be moving from one house and then going back to a maternal or a paternal family home. A lot of you might be as well. Um, I, I feel almost like, I feel almost like, um, 
the Ten of Pentacles is a is a generational wealth type of card. Is things, possessions, um, that we have built up over the years. It's the accumulation of wealth. And I feel like at this point, you are very financially secure and you are looking for that person that you want to build a future with. At the same time, there is potential here to meet a very kindred spirit, somebody that that you feel like you've known for a long time. I call this a soul connection card when I do private readings, the two of cups, because that's what it feels like. It's like you just meet someone or you just started dating them and you feel like you've known them forever and you can see them in your future, you can see yourself building a life with them. So overall, it looks very, very good. Both of these cards together indicate a very uh, stable, permanent type of relationship or a relationship that has the potential to go the whole nine yards, okay? So it's like in it for the long haul. It has potential for that if that's what you want. So in terms of um, collaboration, we have some really good cards here for you guys. And um, it's going to be a really good month, Scorpios. And you've been through a lot within the past three years. So I feel like this is go going to be like one of those breakthrough months for you where you pretty much know what you're going to do. And you pretty much, you have full access, full control of your life, okay? So group work and interactions. Um, the Three of Pentacles basically indicates some type of collaboration, um, some type of learning project where all the people are chipping in their ideas so that um, they can work together to build something of value, to build something based on very specific like uh, guidelines, rules, specifications, but they're all collaborating together. No one is working at cross purposes with one another. This is going to be a very other oriented month and you are going to have to hear other people's input, but I feel almost like you're the master builder and they're coming to you and they're consulting you so that you can give them advice on how to do something once again I feel more of a financial uh, consultation type of card with you I don't feel you're seeking advice from other people I feel that other people are coming to you because you have shown them that you know what you're doing um, what's coming from this is that if you are in a situation where you're working with clients you're self-employed a lot of clients are going to be seeking you for your expertise. It helps you build up your financial foundation. It helps you get a lot of clients through word of mouth, through spreading your reputation. So it is going to be very, very, um, it's going to be a good opportunity for you to network, to branch out, to work with other people, because that way you can get a lot of referrals. You can get like a lot more clients through the, the clients that you've worked really hard to build up, okay? So financially, it is going to be a very, very phenomenal month, okay? So it's it's like through the roof. You're going to be making a lot of money. You're going to be getting a lot of clients. You're also going to be, um, I feel as well, when it comes to estate planning, you're consulting other people. When it comes to like wills, your own wills, health insurance, um, things like that, and estate planning especially when pertaining to property buying insurance for property that's where you're consulting other people but other people are coming in for you for like a uh, very um succinct practical guidance when it comes to the the job that you do so you're getting a lot of clients now in terms of your advice um what i'm getting here is i do feel scorpios i know that the past three years you know you have that saturn return and it's rough and what it does is that it forces us to grow up. It forces us to re-examine areas in our lives that we're not content with so that we can, number one, fix it, or number two, let it go, okay? So I feel like, going back to what I said here, I mentioned that I feel you like poking at something. And I feel like whatever it was, it's kind of like, dead and gone and you're like poking at it because you're still upset and that's normal you know it's normal to be upset and to be angry but if you're harboring all that resentment and you're not moving on from it it's going to eat at you and I also feel like it's also allowing the other person to have control over you I hope that makes sense so he you know heal from it move on um, 
sometimes when we 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 tell ourselves that oh I don't care about that person anymore but every time you hear their name you start to feel something it basically means that you know you might have some unresolved feelings that you're not honest to that you're not honest with yourself about regarding that person so that's something for you to really look at like why is it still making you so angry why are you still you know like like picking at it okay and then on the other end is and I'm saying that mainly because we have the five of swords and the five of swords is like a hollow victory it's an empty victory because both sides are hurt both sides are destroyed it's kind of like um, getting a personal gain at somebody else's expense so in the greater scheme of things in a cosmic way it is an empty victory because it's sort of like what are you achieving and at the expense of whom or what so if you can walk away from a situation without conflict try to do so okay because it's not going to serve you well to dwell on things and to try to keep poking at things all right even though you're you might be upset even though you might be hurt so on the emotional front it's going to be bit in your best interest to try to let situations go you know close the doors close them for good and don't let the past back in all right um I almost feel like I feel like there's somebody around you and um, you have a lot of I feel like they're bringing with them temptation okay so going back to what I mentioned earlier you might be with somebody that you're not happy with there's another person and the juxtaposition between the two people is showing you the you know the the positives and the negatives in your existing relationship so think of it as a learning experience okay so this per this new person that's in your life they might be everything that you want in a partner but you if you already have a partner you need to take care of that situation first before you do anything with a new person so don't think of it as oh wow this person just fell on my lap it's meant to be well they're in your life to teach you something so maybe they're there to teach you that your current relationship is unhealthy so maybe you need to you know figure that out first and sort that out first and then there maybe the new person is gone from your life so maybe they're there very very temporarily to do that I feel like that might be the case it might not for a lot of you but either way take care of your existing situation first before you jump into the new because I feel like there is temptation we have the ace of wands which indicates passion being ignited we also have the world card which basically in this deck it's a woman who is very very desirable it is um, somebody who is very worldly very well traveled it is somebody that's bringing in like fresh energy into your life okay so I do sense there is an element of temptation there's an element of um, wanting something but once you achieve it you might find out it's a hollow victory because it's at the expense of somebody else I hope that makes sense Scorpios and I feel like I feel like you don't act lightly but I feel like something is is around you it seems like it's constantly being thrown on your path and it's easy access I hope that makes sense it's a big temptation but it's also that whole thing about easy access so the the thing here is with the Saturn lesson it is forcing us to take responsibilities for our actions and if we haven't learned that lesson I feel like it's coming back again right now mainly because of the mercury in retrograde that's happening the end of uh, this month so that you can turn the other way and not um, not fall into the trap of temptation I hope that makes sense okay so that's something I feel coming through a lot of you might be dealing with an earth sign so Virgo Taurus Capricorn I do feel this person is offering something very solid for you so I do sense that there is that situation is worth investing in is worth 
um, giving it a chance so that to to foster it that's a good opportunity but I do sense that you need to finish your own situation if you're in a, another relationship you need to take care of that first before you can jump into anything new that's just the responsible thing to do and that's one of Saturn's lessons so don't be um, swayed by temptation I also feel as well and obviously this is not going to apply to all of you there's a lot of money there's a lot of money falling into your lap and you know wealth money money brings problems okay and I feel like there this is a really powerful this is a really like I, I feel like there's a lot of money wealth prestige power associated with this spread and going back to what I mentioned for the Scorpio yearly reading all that glitters is not gold so if you're letting the impact of money a lot of money affect your ego your self-esteem it basically means that that lesson wasn't learned during your Saturn return so if that even resonates with you really think about it okay don't let your moral compass be corrupted by money um, so I'm going to leave it at that because I feel like this is a really heavy it's the cards are really good but I feel like there is some sense of like power and money um, this interplay between wealth and money and power is not entirely positive so you might want to you know try to flush out that so uh, flush that out for yourself because you know I'm reading for a lot of Scorpios so if that resonates with you it's something that you might want to sit and ponder about okay so let's move into the love reading just um, make sure the message is do not let money corrupt or mislead your moral compass all right so let's see what's in store for you guys for love Scorpios once again I'm not going to be reading reversals with this deck and let's see if any earth sign shows up So um, one of the things that I was explaining with the other signs is that I only um, pick out the cards that fall down if they're face up. And then the ones that stick out, regardless of whether they're face up or down, I pull them out if it's like one card. Oh, so let me turn this around. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So we don't have specific signs that are showing up. We do have specific energies. So the first thing at the center of this spread here is the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups denotes a family completion, like full emotional happiness. This is the apex of the human emotional experience. It is an overwhelmingly positive card. However, like I said, I don't read reversals with this deck. So I feel that, you know, it's right next to the Ten of Swords. So let's just read both of these together. First of all, for those of you who are in um, married, like coupled, who are married and things like that, this is, uh, once again, I feel like you're doing a lot of reassessment. There's a lot of like power issues in your current relationships, okay? Like control issues, power issues. And it might have to do with, you know, who, which partner is earning more in the relationship. So once again, do not let money be a um, major concern or don't let money dictate the direction of the relationship. 
um, for a lot of you, you might be in a relationship where you feel like everything is hunky-dory, but for some reason there might be some type of disconnect when it comes to um, you and your partner, like seeing eye to eye on everyday things, such as, you know, communications with the Ten of Swords, such as um, one person. For a lot of you, you might be dealing with a fire sign. Um, fire signs are... Sagittarius, Aries, and Leos. Because of the two uh, cards in the same suit, in the suit of the, the wands energy. So I feel like... I feel like it's a timing issue, you know? So, for example, you might work separate hours or opposite hours. Um, they might work... Let's see. You might work at night. They might work in the morning. And it's really hard for you both to coordinate a time so that you can be intimate with one another. There might also be like a lot of um, pent up frustration and resentment uh, when it comes to child rearing, for example, because the Ten of Co uh, Cups indicates a family unit. So there will be children involved. There are practical responsibilities when it comes to, you know, upholding your home, keeping your home nice and tidy. Um, house chores and you know the, the things that we need to do to um, sustain ourselves there might be discrepancy uh, arguments about who's doing what who's doing their fair share who's chipping in in the home environment so for a lot of you I feel like there is um, imbalances between what you're doing to maintain the household versus what your partner is doing. So there might be some arguments regarding that situation. So just, um, you know, try to get a poster board, write down some tasks, write down responsibilities that you, you know, take turns, but more importantly, designate responsibilities, who does what, and then try to be consistent as well. That way it can, um, you know, lessen the tension within the family. Because I feel like with the Ten of Swords, it seems to me like there might be some resentment. But the Ten is also the end of a cycle. The Ten of Cups is also the end of a cycle. So something is being renewed in this situation, okay? Something is being alleviated here. So you, you have opportunities to do that. But I would recommend, you know, having like a chore list so that everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing in that so that it's fair and there's no resentment. I definitely feel an element of time. So this is basically like um, sunset, early in the morning, um, possibly another, you know, noon type of, and this is like midnight. So I definitely some timing issue, um, people working different hours of the night and things like that. It's making it hard for you to emotionally connect to your partner or at least intellectually like um, find a common ground when it comes to the values that you believe in versus the values that your partner believes in. Um, the other thing I'm sensing here is I feel like for a lot of you, um, it feels a little bit lonely in your marriage. So, you know, do things to spice it up. I, I feel loneliness mainly because center of the spread, we have, you know, a family, but the surrounding cards are very solitary. The surrounding cards are very, very solitary. All the cards depict just one person. So I do feel like it would be, you know, better for you to try to find a way to um, mitigate this. And, you know, taking, spending quality time together, of course. There's a lot of work-related cards here. The uh, Six of Wands is a public image type of card. Don't let power and money get to your head, okay? And um, especially don't be tempted away from your relationship because that's not going to go anywhere. That That's just um, a recipe for disaster. So this is a very high power, high status type of card. It's a card about, you know, being in the public eye, um, a, having a lot of achievements, getting a lot of recognition for your work. You're in a position where you're kind of like the center of attention. There will be people flocking to you, which can bring about a lot of temptations as well if you're in a couple or committed relationship. So that's something to be mindful about, okay? Um, the other thing I'm sensing as well, um, for those of you who are single, 
dating single or if you're in a relationship and you're not, you know, um, you're not committed. So if you're just dating and you're trying to see where things are headed, I feel like things are going really well right now. You are still very um, much on the defense because I feel like a lot of you have been through the ringer in the past. So you're trying to find a way to move forward. I feel there is somebody in your environment who is very, very tempting to you. But for some reason, the way they behave, the way they look might echo. It might bring up some type of anxieties and fear from your past. And because of that, you're on the defense. So what I'm seeing is this. This is the card about the Empress and the Empress is a very, very attractive person. This is like the ultimate, you know, ideal partner because um, they're caring, loving, attractive. They're very giving of their time, of their energy, of their resources. Um, I don't read reversal. So in the negative sense, it can be someone who's quite frivolous, somebody who can be quite superficial. If it were in the reverse, the Empress is usually somebody who's like... Um, who blows through a lot of money, who likes nice opulent lifestyle and they don't really lift a finger. They can be a little bit lazy. So I feel like this is, um, it can be like that. It can go both ways. But what I'm sensing is there is somebody who's very positive in your life, who is very attractive and you might be attracted to them. But the way they carry themselves, the way that they are, it might remind you of somebody from your past. Or they might have, you know, a lot of suitors and you are suspecting you're with them and you're happy, but you might be suspecting that you're not the only one. Um, and I feel like that's for those of you who are not in a serious relationship. Now, Scorpios, and I can't believe I'm saying this again, you have really good intuition. If you feel there's something off, it probably is. It probably is. So... If you, you know, you, you really have to think about why you're feeling a certain way around a certain person. You're a very receptive water sign and perceptive. So if you're feeling dis, um, like unsettled around a certain person and you don't know why, you might want to, you know, either leave it alone or at least, you know, try to dig for some information. But I feel like if there's, if, if something is, this is the way I look at life in general. I feel like it's a series of lessons that we need to learn so that we can grow. And you just went through your Saturn uh, transit, like your Saturn sun transit. And if those lessons have not been learned, they're going to constantly cycle back in until you learn them. Okay. So whatever this situation was. Um, if it, if you feel like you've handled it poorly, this is basically a second chance for you to fix it with another person, but basically you're learning the same lesson, but with a different person. I hope that makes sense. So make sure you learn it this time. If that's what's going on here, because I feel like there's somebody that you really like, but they remind you of somebody from your past. You're afraid of getting involved with them because you know you don't want the same the repeat so you're on guard and the foundation here is that things are going to be okay you don't need to be on guard because I feel like things are being reciprocated the feelings are mutual so it's okay and we have the ten of cups as the central card meaning you're going to be really really happy this is um, the relationship that has a lot of potential as well. For those of you who are single and dating, I feel like you're on guard, but you have nothing to fear here, be here because this could be the ideal person that you've been waiting for. Because earlier we received the Two of Cups and the Two of Cups is a very balanced, nice, soothing, strong soul connection type of relationship. Okay. So let your guard down, make sure that, um, you don't carry past emotional pains and heartaches and hurts with you into your new relationship. So treat the new person as a brand new person so that it, you, so that you don't let old energies affect new people. Okay. Going back to what I mentioned earlier about, you know, um, poking at something, 
like just um if you if somebody from your past is invoking such strong you know negative feelings maybe you need to sort that out first maybe it's not loathing that you feel but maybe you still have feelings for them okay so either way it would be in your best interest to try to sort that out but overall what i'm sensing as well is those of you who are single and dating i feel there's a lot of fear about committing i feel like you've met the right person I feel like you've met the right person, but you're very fearful about giving it your all. So you're still on the sideline nibbling at life rather than delving back in because you're afraid of getting hurt. Your financial situation is very stable right now. You have a lot of people who are in your midst who are vying for your attention. So you might not want to be exclusive to one person, even though there is one person that's bringing a lot of emotional fulfillment into your life. For those of you who are coupled, I do sense almost like imbalances in the relationship definitely needs to be addressed. And I also feel like you might be walking around, you know, on eggshells around the other person. Um, so you're not kicking up a fuss. So there's almost like that, you know, silent treatment coming through. So, you know, just um, fix your relationships for those of you who are uh, coupled, okay? Because the Ten of Cups can be very, very happy, but when it's next to the Ten of Swords, I feel like it's very, very high highs and very low lows. So think about, you know, what aim for a middle ground because you can't be happy and healthy if every day is an emotional roller coaster, okay? So aim for relationships that give you like a middle ground, all right?